Welcome back to the Windy River Open 2022 presented by Innova Disc Golf. This is round one, part three. My name is Jeremy Sovey and joining me is Dan Poff. You. Should be a good nine. It's definitely, the weather is fully cleared up now. Um, I do believe we run into a little bit of darkness towards the end of this round, but bear with us. Hole 19, par three, 458 feet. This is a huge turnover. Um, the second campground hole that we added in and very, very difficult. Um, it needs to be turning the entire way. I have not seen a forehand be able to push there, but I'm sure it could be done. This hole ranks as the 11th hardest hole for the tournament. Oh, and there was also only one, actually, no spoilers. <clears throat> Let's see. <laughs> I like the way you think. No spoilers. All right. Brian looking to do a forehand turnover. Should be the same as a backhand turnover. I believe it was a special rule on this hole that if you had a lost disc because of the long grass that was in some of the areas made it troublesome for some of the flat shots that penetrated through, you would just move up to the drop zone versus a, a re-tee. A great fix from last year. This is a really big turnover. It's getting the flex. Huh, I want to say fine. it's a little, it was a just little in... early right but probably still looking at a circle two putt. I believe he's closer to maybe 100 feet away, but he should have an open approach. Oh. I could okay. I could definitely be wrong about that, but I believe it is. I believe you are correct about that. I definitely played this hole for par all weekend, but that was very close by uh, Caleb Joyner. If it would have flexed out a little bit, it would have had a chance. And barring my putting woes that I had, I had looks at this hole both rounds, but Ooh, unsuccessful nice. myself. <laughs> Cameron Messerschmidt, probably actually even a little further, maybe 120, 130. <laughs> Caleb from in the uh, in the junk. That will work. Getting caught up. Looked like it had the height to go in the basket. That was impressive, but it's a fine result nonetheless. Let's say this is probably close to thirty-eight feet. I would agree. Oh, just over the top. A little high on it. Nice spin pot. Squeaks it under the rim, but nonetheless, in the basket, and good commitment on that putt. Yeah, this section of the course is primarily used for people that walk, walk their dogs. Uh, there's a bike track through the middle of it, but it does not have a disc golf course permanently over here at the moment. There's been lots of talk about trying to get one over there, but just haven't haven't figured out a permanent permanent layout yet for it. We use this as a, a great section to add some difficulty for our tournaments when I'm trying to add the player cap as well. Mm, oh, Ryan man. just a little off on that circle putt. Inside the circle putt. That was for his comeback par. But he will settle for a bogey. 
I believe there was only one birdie on this hole for the day, and it was Emmett Kyson. Nicely done, sir. Hole 20, par three, 180 feet. This is a tough hole. Not, not super tough, but if you hit anything early, good luck getting up and down. It's a short hole, but it's got its teeth. I think you could just about close your eyes and have a similar result. It played, <laughs> it played very... You know, just throw it in a general direction, hope that you find a gap. Now, I hadn't seen that play where you float it down through the gap and let it just sit down. So that was probably how the hole was designed to be played. How did you play this hole? Throw it really hard straight at it. Ah. Potentially crash through some stuff. <laughs> I believe this was one of the holes that I was able to pick up both rounds. I think I did the same type of shot that Caleb Mann had. Just a nice float. Try to get as far through it as, as you can. Ryan with a really good shot. Going long in the basket. And if you go long, it can be very tough as well. I believe I also got it both rounds, but not confirmed. Caleb's in for his birdie. Caleb Joyner's kind of has to lean out and do a little horseshoe putt of sorts. To anybody that doesn't work on uh, off stance putts at home, not only are they fun to do as a game, but they can really bail you out in tournaments. That was a good attempt from Caleb Joyner, just a bit low. Cameron makes good for his birdie. Yeah. Brian appears to be close enough that even with an awkward stance, I'm sure um, many pros would make that. Him. Looked like he, uh, he got out of that stretch without even putting a hand down. Nicely done from the young man. Hole 21, par four. You need to play it through these initial bushes, kind of flex it down there. And then you go out into the open field where you want to play it up to the right. And it does go a little bit uh, up in elevation there. So a typical layup play to the gap, although it looks like Caleb Mann has played it long, which can get very tricky over in that bush. <clears throat> this hard was this hole was hard to attack to try to get anything more than just a, an approach to get a birdie there wasn't really much of an eagle opportunity that I saw no it was it was about that's about exactly how you want to play it it opens up that angle to the basket you can then shape your shot through an open gap Cameron's in position for another good good sidearm from there. That's mm, that looks just to be in position as well. Caleb from a tough position in the Russian olive bushes. That was a great great sidearm from where he was. Big big high flex shot. I think he's Less than 200 feet from the pin, from that obstructed stance he was in. Yes, yeah, should easily get up, up and down for his par. And 
these boys are fighting, fighting to finish this round before the day's over. You see the sun setting in the background. I believe uh, <laughs> our group was partially to blame for this, but uh, it's our lead card. We found OB a lot and random other scenarios. Great upshot there for Brian. See if Caleb Joyner can flex this out. Well done. Great scramble play from him. Caleb looking to clean up his par. Should do so easily from there. Cameron has been very dialed with those floaty Heiser forehand approaches. Caleb Joyners makes good on his par there. Let's see if Brian can knock down another putt. Well done. Par for the card. That is a fine, fine hole to have a star par on. Hole 22, par three, 250 feet. There is a mando on this tree to the left, the opposite of the drone flyover. You must go left of that tree and this walkway short of the basket is an out of bounds play. So if you're gonna push around the tree, you wanna make sure you push long enough to clear the walkway. I believe there was a creek OB long that might come into play, but they really have to put some distance on it to find the water. <clears throat> yes, that'd be a very errant shot. Caleb's shot looks just to be maybe 25 short, hits a tree and crashes, it's a fine result. That to hook up a little bit, but should be just fine right about where Caleb Mans is. <clears throat> Potentially too high. Higher. I believe it hit the Mando tree, but should be should be fine in regards to the Mando. As long as he doesn't land on the road, I think he's okay. Yes, and if you ended up short of the road, that was also safe. So really the miss was just to land it short and have it fall onto the road. This looks a bit further than I anticipated. Probably at least circle's edge. Wonderfully Great. done. Oh. He's feeling his putt now. It's a very nice one to get. Well, well done by Caleb Mann. He's getting himself back to even. Let's see if he can continue <clears> that. <throat> a little to the right for Caleb Joyner there. Maybe just out the side, outside the circle for Cameron. Yep, with a jump putt. Oh, just just a little missed low. it. A good birdie by Caleb Mann. And the rest of the card looks to be taking par. All right, hole 23, 260 foot par three. It's perched up on the edge of the hill. So you either want to land basically into the hill or barely on top or hyzer it and not have it fall down the hill. I'd say the miss is having it 
way down the hill where you have to do an elevated putt or if you're closer to the fence. And the fence does play as OB along that right side. This looks to be fine, a little pushed outside. Brian looks like he's gonna take a sidearm up and over the fence. Nice width to that shot. That's very tricky. I wonder how many people hit that telephone pole. <laughs> Me too. Po post in the comments how many people you think. This hole played pretty straightforward. Well oh, that was a very Good nice birdie. putt. That's pretty much death putt. If he if he pushes through, he's likely to roll all the way down the hill, potentially gain speed and get long. to about 30 feet. This hole played at over a half stroke under par. Um, where did this fall in terms of uh, easiness there, Jeremy? Let me take a look real quick. Hole 23 was the easiest hole on the day. All right. Let's see if Caleb Mann can put this in, save his par. There it is. The distance of this hole makes it quite a bit easier. Um, just a little bit longer, and this could be any errant shot you would need to lay up, basically. Hole 24, par 3, 330 feet. The water is out of bounds, and I believe the fairway to hole 5 on the right that the drone did not pass over is out of bounds. You want to clear the creek and try to get it to the back side of that walkway. The basket is perched up a little elevated. There is very, very thick brush everywhere. Need to be accurate here. Looks like Brian may have turned that one over a little bit. That sun got it, is got it stalled out in the sky. Yes, that sun is pretty well set at this point. Just trying to make it through in the last bits of daylight. Yeah, bear with us, everybody. But we're gonna watch some more birdies happen anyway. Oh yes, this looks to be a nice angle. Didn't quite get to see that one finish. Caleb Mann looks to be taking the straight the straight route up and over. That was very and nice. He's landed, just left at the basket, but he should have a pretty pretty decent look at it. Let's see what Brian can do. Oh, what a run from all of sixty, I'd say. That was a great effort. The camera doesn't really do it justice to how thick that shrubbery is behind that basket. It is almost impenetrable. Very nice putt from Caleb Joyner. And this hole played just play. a little bit over par with six people taking birdies and then a couple bogeys and a couple doubles. That water can come into play if you don't get it over those first trees. Messer Schmidt also from deep. Good bid. Tapping in their pars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. 
All right, looks like everybody decided to finish out. That's what I like to hear. Hole 25, par 4, 510 feet. The path and to the right is OB. So you need to make sure that your first shot at least crosses in bounds. If you're trying to push the basket with a flex, it can be dangerous. But if you also take too safe of a hyzer, you can find those Russian olives off to the left. <clears throat> he skips off the path, which is very fortunate. There's quite a bit of grass that's grown into the path where a skip is not always the result. The group seems to like Cam's shot. Let's see if we can get a better angle from this point of view. I was kidding. Land safe. Caleb Mann puts it high enough for us to see on this one. Looks like a very nice hyzer coming in. That cloud does look like a race car. Look at that. And is that a little fish above it? Oh, is that a koi? Oh, it's from Star Wars. Very interesting. <laughs> it's one of their speeders. Anyways, there's definitely some some neat colors up in the skyline as we see them make their approaches here. Kayla Man puts it up. <clears throat> Just off to the right. When it gets dark like this, uh, depth perception gets to you a little bit. It's sometimes hard to focus 100%. So props to these guys for pushing through and finishing this round. Yeah, I was one card in front of them, and it seemed like it was going to be just fine. And that light turned off within a matter of... 10 15 minutes it went from visible to needing a truck on the final hole to have lights on the basket hole 26 par 3 357 feet there is a mando early off the tee pad you must play left of and the walkway and left is out of bounds so we got a filter on it so we can see the shots and the up and over play is definitely in in play for some of these guys. As long as they go left of the initial tree on the right side of the path, that is all fair. But they must cross back inbounds to the right of the walkway. The man's line up the forehand. Definitely the more traditional play on this hole. Got to see a few people try to road skip the sidearm too. Most of the time it seemed to work out. I believe I did that second round. But it could have been this round. Hole 26. Played .68 over par, and it is slotted in as the fourth hardest hole for the day. With nobody not surprising, taking the Not surprising to see it be difficult for quite a few people towards the end of the day in the dark, but... It's very tough to get it to move far enough right through that initial gap. I've seen a couple people do the Sky Anheuser over top and get a late flex right that pans out to the basket, but it is a very touchy shot when you're putting that much airspace under it. No doubt. The basket's lit up pretty good by a light. At least the players are able to see their target.
Throw it in. Ooh, very nice approach. Just a bit low right for Caleb Joyner's putt. Let's see if Caleb Mann can come true to his his putting today. Look depth to be on perception. line, just a little nose down. Yeah, the depth perception can be really tough out here. Once it starts to get dark, I notice that as well. <clears throat> All right, hole 27, par 3, 420 feet. Slightly downhill the whole way, and it plays tough if you want to take the straight um, flex line down the middle that is there. As long as you don't hit those limbs, you can take a forehand out to the left, or some people have been finding a hyzer route on the right. The path and left was OB, and then those rail top, uh, the white line, I believe, on the road is OB. Maybe Jer Jeremy, you might know. Was it railroad ties or is it white line in this hole? I do believe they had the railroad ties as the out of bounds on the right of the basket. Wonderful. So this hole, there's lots of options. You can take the straight up the middle gap. There's a wide left gap, but you're bringing that road out of bounds into place. And if you take this high right hyzer gap, depending on the type of angle of hyzer you like to throw. It's reachable in all three, all three different areas. So the choice is yours. And you can see the truck down there at the bottom of the hill. This lights on for the players so they can see where the basket is. See so the basket's probably within 50, 60 feet of those headlights, so. At least they, at least they can finish with the sights on their target. Oh yeah. And this hole played just over par with only two holes on the day. I mean, two birdies on the day. Pardon me. By uh, Kyle Phillips and Mikey Berenger. It's a, it's a very nice birdie to get. Can be very tough. Let's see what let's see what these guys are left with for their approaches. Sound like somebody drew some metal. Did that oh, skip that off the top? Fireworks to I finish believe. the round. Holy cow! Yeah. Round two, we finished a little earlier. We were able to finish in daylight for round two. <laughs> yes, thankfully. We got a little reprieve for the players on round two versus today. It's tough trying to do camera work, I'm sure, once the light is entirely gone. <laughs> uh, but. Camera with the long jump putt. Mm, didn't hear any metal hit. Blues Caleb Man here. Just 
to touch love. Caleb cleans up his par. Brian tapping in his par as well. Shooting an alarming nine down on the round. I believe he was three or four strokes clear of the field. Ah, well done on his part. Thank you for joining us for the final nine of the front round, Winnie River Open 2022. And thank you so much See to y'all. Fairway Media for doing all this filming and putting in all that work. Like and subscribe.